This movie got some heavy praise when it premiered at the Venice Film Festival. And now, it's time to talk about it. And now, it's fate. It's on me. We have a job to do. Are you ready? I'm ready. So Ad Astra is a new science fiction movie that follows the character played by Brad Pitt after he experiences a pretty bad accident in this station that he works at. And after this accident, he finds out that his father, played by Tommy Lee Jones, might still be alive. So as a result, he is sent out to basically find his father and what happened. Alrighty guys, so let's get into Ad Astra. So Ad Astra was a movie that I had heard so many things about primarily because it was heavily praised at the Venice Film Festival and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the trailers for some reason didn't really hook me into this movie. I mean, it looked like a very interesting movie, but nothing was grabbing me to say, oh my god, I have to see this movie right away. And the director of this film, James Gray, had done two other films, one film called The Lost City of Z, which I have heard excellent things about, but I had never really seen his previous film, so this is my first James Gray film that I've seen. Though I do love a great space movie, and what I think of Ad Astra? I liked it. Everyone here is very, very good. There is not a single performance that stands out, but with that I doubt this is Brad Pitt's movie, and Brad Pitt has given some great performances over the years. This is one of his best performances that he has ever given, and this is coming from a guy that has been acting for many years now. Brad Pitt's acting really relies more on his facial expressions on and how he reacts to certain things. Like, there is a particular scene in this movie into which you can just see just the psychological beats that are going in his head, and I just thought, whoa. But in terms of the other performances of this movie, Ruth Nega is in this movie, Donald Sutherland is in this, and I like I mentioned before, Tommy Lee Jones, and when they do have screen time in this movie, they are fairly good in this movie. Something else that I did like about this movie for some parts, I should say, is how James Gray directs this movie. Now, like I mentioned before, I had not seen a James Gray film beforehand, so I wasn't really aware of how he directed a certain movie. For some parts of this movie, I really enjoyed of how James Gray sets up certain scenes, the direction he takes some scenes. This is a movie that, from the very start, James Gray has a very methodical, like, pace to this movie. Not to mention, there are some really cool scenes in this movie, one to which I'm only gonna say one particular thing mad max in space and one particular thing that i really liked about this movie was how it showed the progression of us as a species not just from our space travel but colonization i was talking to my boss during the screen for this movie and i was just saying to him i can see this happening oh my god but if there is one particular thing that i absolutely loved about ad astra was all of the technical aspects from the production design, the cinematography, the color palette this movie used, and also the score of this movie. From how Hoyt Van Hoyama, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, he's actually Christopher Nolan's regular DP now these days. How he frames certain images and how he lights images with the colors that he uses, one particular of how Brad Pitt walks away from the color of red in some strange scenes. It looked very Kubrickian in a very big way. Also, yes, the music for this movie is euphoric to listen to. From the opening track to the end track, seriously, this is yet another thing that for the Oscars next year, I can definitely see this being nominated. There are definitely some tracks in this movie that were very Zahn Zimmer-like. And I'm not gonna lie, the message at the end did get me. I feel like I'm about to lose a lot of people with what I'm about to say because I know that there are tons of people that are praising this movie so much that some of those same people are calling Ad Astra one of the best films of the year. Now, do I feel that way? Unfortunately, no, I do not. Going into the cast of Ad Astra, you have Brad Pitt, who does give a phenomenal and a Oscar the performance, but when it comes to everyone else, Ruth Nega is barely in this movie, Donald Sutherland bailing the movie and Tommy Lee Jones also bailing this movie. I mean, you have some big name guys who really don't get a lot of screen time. Like I think maybe five or 
10 minutes max of screen time for them i mentioned that this worked in some parts for me and that's james gray's direction now i feel like that since i hadn't seen a james gray movie beforehand that it was a bit of a detriment to me because i really wasn't aware of how this man had directed movies prior and since that this movie is more of a slow and a more methodical pace movie than i was expecting i'm not gonna lie to you guys for some parts i was kind of bored and i actually don't mind slow burners whatsoever in fact i love some of them out there when they have great stories great characters and in particularly a phenomenal payoff like if you ask me personally what the best slow burners are of the past couple of years one of them is sicario one of them arrival but the most recent one that i could think of was annihilation and here while this movie definitely has some great parts when it came to the payoff it just wasn't quite there for me i mean i will definitely say that the message did get me, but it, it didn't hit me as hard as I would have liked it to. Another thing for me was this. It felt like to me, at least, that half the plot of this movie was Brad Pitt's character trying to find his father, played by Tommy Lee Jones, while another part of this movie was Brad Pitt's character trying to do another certain thing. And I felt like that at one certain point, it wasn't really doing that certain thing. Even though this movie is just over two hours, at times... It felt like it was even longer than that. It felt like at least over two and a half hours. There are some scenes in this movie in which it felt like that they kept on going and going and going to the point where it felt like my eyelids were getting heavy. Ad Astra, at times, this movie is very ambitious, but I feel like that it got a little too ambitious for its own good. <laughs> So overall, Ad Astra was a movie that I liked, but I just didn't love. Ad Astra is well crafted, it has an Oscar the performance from Brad Pitt, and not to mention with some immaculate cinematography and euphoric music. Unfortunately though, the movie story didn't have me emotionally invested enough to have me caring about its characters, and not just that, the movie is a very slow burn that I feel like that a lot of people will be really put off by. But all in all, I did like Ad Astra more than disliking it, so I'm going to give Ad Astra a 3.25 out of 5 stars. This was definitely a solidly crafted science fiction movie, but unfortunately, I just did not love it like a lot of people do. Alrighty, guys, so comment down and let me know below. Have you guys seen Ad Astra? What did you guys think of Ad Astra? Are you guys looking forward to this movie? Let me know below. If y'all want to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. I'm also on Snapchat and Stardust. So if you guys want to follow me on all those social media platforms, all the links and the usernames are in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Ad Astra. If so, please hit that like button and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell for whenever a new video of mine goes live. If you guys want to see any of my previous two reviews, please click either right there or there. And of course, until my next review, I will see you guys next time.